Hello, just a quick video today from myself. I decided to accompany an article I did a few days ago about using Citrix User Profile Manager to enable true multi server, multi session sort of capability using FS Logics Profile Containers. The article should be linked down here somewhere. So go have a read of that. It's got all of the details in that accompany this. If you're using FS Logics Profile Containers, particularly in Citrix virtual apps environments, you can have multiple sessions open and save all of the settings from them as long as you're using session sharing which is normally turned on which means if the apps that you're launching are available on the same server your previous apps are on they'll all launch in the same session and they'll share by using differencing disks we'll show you that in action first however if you then go and have apps that are on multiple silos or multiple farms what you get is a copy of that disk and the changes can't be written back so maybe it's not a huge thing but in some environments it can be a bit of a problem so first of all i've got two delivery groups set up i've got um some apps published from one delivery group some apps published from the other i'm logged on to receiver here this instance of google chrome calculator and powershell are all delivered from one delivery group so they should session share Google Chrome underscore one is delivered from a separate delivery group. So we'll run that one afterwards and show you what happens with the disk. So first of all, before you do this, if I flip over to my demand controller and edit this policy that we've got right here, I'll just show you if you're in a virtual apps environment in FS Logics, um, there is a policy that you need to enable or a couple of policies. If you go to the FS Logics profile containers, you need to enable this policy to allow concurrent user sessions to enable it to save those differencing disks from sessions that have been shared on the same server and you also need to enable this profile type one switch it to try for read write profile and fall back to read only so if I come out of there and look at my profile store nothing in there yet this is where my profile sit so when I log on with the user let's launch Google Chrome over here and you should say unfortunately it's launching on my second screen rather annoyingly uh, but let's just wait for that to fire up should see in here that a profile has been created and if we look in there we should see because we've got those settings turned on it's got the main profile in there and it's also created a read write differencing disk there that it's going to merge its changes back in from so this instance of chrome which is published is launched here which is all well and good so then if I launch another application from that same delivery group, what we should see is that this one launches a lot faster because it's session sharing. We've already got a session established. As you can see, this one's already launched. Calculator's there. If we do the same with PowerShell, click on this one. Again, it launches pretty quickly because they're all launching the same session. Yeah. So the idea is, oh, great suspender launch in the background there. You can make changes in each of these sessions and they'll put them into that read write VHDX and then merge them back to the main profile when you log out. So if we close PowerShell and we close Calculator and then just make some fundamental change in Chrome. Let's change the home page for instance. So if I go to Football365 settings and change this to my home page. That and close this down. Now, what you should see if you switch back to the domain controller as that session logs off, right? As that session exits, FS Logics will begin to merge the changes in that read write disk back into the main profile, and all of those settings should then be sort of merged together. So that should disappear as it has just there. Now, if I log the user back on to any of those sessions, so let's open Google Chrome again. open it up and we should see when it launches up that it should have saved the changes that we made there which obviously we'd expect it to do and there it is again taking us this time straight to our home page that we've set up yeah so that's all well and good now obviously that's all fine as long as you, all of your applications are installed within your single image and you've got session sharing enabled. But what if you didn't have that? What if you had to launch something that launched up on a different server? So first of all, let's launch Google Chrome again on the first delivery group. So this is our instance of Google Chrome launched on the first delivery group. Now if we launch this one that's Google Chrome underscore one, 
what will actually happen is because this is on a setting delivery group and therefore it's not session sharing and you can tell straight away because it's taking a longer time to launch what will happen is it'll take a read only copy of those existing settings right so we should say when this one opens up it should hopefully he says have the uh, have those settings there but they will be in read only mode so this is our secondary session now it's obviously got the home page right because it's taken a read only copy but if I switch across to the server that I'm on and I hope I've got the right server here for the second delivery group if we look in the C Windows temp directory what we should see somewhere and I knew I would get the wrong server so let me just try that again yeah let's just try that again with the right server this time my apologies over here so let's try the C windows temp directory again and hopefully this time we should be able to see yeah once you get the right server this is the read only copy so it's taken from over here and I'll pull that stuff it's taken this right the and it can't get a, a handle to it a, a dedicated hand to it so it's taken a read only copy of it right so that's fair enough but obviously that's up there if we close our first session down right and then we go to this session here and let's go to another website like the register let's don't forget this is in read only mode so if we go to settings and change the home page again and close this session down we should say this time that our changes aren't persisting that one is still merging back let's wait for that to finish there the merge is finished from the first session but the second session we made the change in there has that change been reflected if the user then launches the original version of it so let's just give that a try as you can see it's gone back to my original setting football 365 because that was a read-only copy so it may not be a huge deal to some people but i know to some people it is how can we get it so that if you get a read-only copy, we get around this problem and have those changes merged back. So let's just close that down for now. Now, rather bizarrely, the thing that you want to install to get it around this issue is Citrix User Profile Management. Citrix User Profile Management has decided that they're going to provide some support to help address this. So I've already got User Profile Management installed on these two servers. However, I've set it to disable so let's just enable it now so let's go in enable profile management on this server and start the service and also on this one as well because it needs to be on both of them So the idea is that profile management will be used only when necessary. So it'll just sit in the background and not do anything with this new setting turned on until such a time as FS Logix logs on and uses it in read-only mode. So that's the, the theory behind it. So let's just have a look at it in action. So there are a couple of settings that you need to make sure and user profile management are turned on so let's just hop out of here and in the group policy management so if we look now first of all you have to make sure that profile type is set as we have it got set there to try for read write profile for battery read only and also that the concurrency is turned on right that has to be done however you also need to go into six components profile management right you need to configure enable profile management obviously um, you can optionally put in a processed group I've put in the same processed group that aligns with my FS logics users so that's all good then give it a path to the user store so where in any settings that it actually saves in this way for merging back we can pop them in here so I've just given it the standard 
path to my profile store just with percent username percent dot upm on the end so i can tell where the other data is being stored the key bit is under advanced settings is this enable this setting for enable multi-session right back now you need at least profile management version 1912 for this i'm using 2003 version also make sure that profile streaming if i remember where it is is not turned on because it won't work if profile streaming is turned on so let's just quickly run through that test that we had again right so let's launch our first instance of google chrome over here now this should go back to football 365 being our home page So if we look over here in our profiles directory again, you should say this time it's created a UPM folder in there, right? So that's where UPM is going to pop anything if it needs to save it. But right at the minute, it's just using the read write disk, right? It's not actually doing anything for UPM. So it's launched, it's got Football365 as our default browser. Now let's launch our session on the other delivery group, the other farm, whatever situation it is. Now, once this one's launched, which again has picked up a read-only, or would have picked up a read-only copy of our settings, rather, if we hadn't done the trick. So if I close down the first session, so that will now be merging back in that usual fashion. But we should now say in the UPM folder, we have a UPM profile folder, because UPM has actually kicked into life now, because it knows there was a read-only request on the other server. So if I just go to, let's just try the register again. And click on that, and this time go to settings and change it to that. Now, what should happen here when this exits is the stuff that we have in here in the UPM folder should now be getting merged whoops, back into the main FS Logix profile. So let's just wait for that log on to complete. Let's just give it a few seconds. Now the UPM data doesn't get deleted once it's merged it back in. It stays there, but you will find that if you then log on in a different way, it'll overwrite it. So it doesn't become a big storage page. You haven't got a full, huge UPM profile sat in there. So it looks like that has finished processing now. So if we then launch our first session again, Hopefully we should say that the changes we made in the second session, because UPM's kind of acted like an intermediary, should hopefully have merged back into the session that we're about to launch now. And there she goes, just on the wrong screen as usual. Let's open back up now. We have our home page sat in there. So we're now sharing sessions between those two. So that's how it works. Uh, the only problem I can possibly foresee with this is if you're doing it at a large scale, you might get some last right of wins issues because that's essentially what it relies on. Because the registry is always written to in every session, so you know there is potential for a little bit of sort of oddness there. But you know, for people who have this issue and want to get that potential to have multi-session, multi-server concurrency on Citrix virtual apps. And here's a dead easy way of doing it. Obviously, you'd have to be a Citrix customer for it. If you're using FS Logic and you're not a Citrix customer, I can't see you actually going out and buying Citrix user profile manager just for this feature, unless you're really badly affected by it. But there it is. That's how to do it. A handy little trick for you to use in your virtual apps environment. Thanks very much.